So time for another inbox review and uh, this is unusual kit time again so um, we've got something here which is obviously a little bit different pretty much out of production now but you might be able to pick this up second hand I have found one this was on eBay but I would imagine there's plenty it shows um, around the country so this is the Azure F91 which is also known as the Fairchild 91 and this was a uh, passenger seaplane basically and um, it was pressed into service there weren't many made only eight aircraft were made in total but it did have quite wide and varied use uh, considering that so we'll have a look in um, inside the box here and you'll see with the marking options so having a look at the kit we've got one bag as is your usually does don't chuck it all over the floor um, with a couple of sprues there and a bag of resin with some vac form as well. Now this kit is also um, was also released by Sword as well, and I believe it's pretty much it's certainly the same plastic. Uh, you just get a bit more resin with the Azure kit. So looking across the sprues there, you can see the basic layout, and we've obviously got a seaplane with the two uh, fuselage halves here, and then one big kind of parasol wing, I suppose, with the engine mount up in the top of the wing. Um, so quite an unusual looking aircraft, quite a gangly thing. This is the um, engine nacelle here which sticks up out the top of the aircraft. There's fine recess detail across the airframe. So if we show, try and zoom in on some of this. Hopefully you can see there some of the recess panel lines, um, which is very nice. There's no rivet detail or anything. And on the inside, it's typical sort of short run, quite sparse and just with a few uh, marks there just to take some of the internal pieces um, everything looks pretty good again what you'd uh, expect from Azure you've got um, basic recess detail and plenty enough to get going with um, and a very good base if you want to uh, detail it further and having a look across the wings here as well we've got some nice ribbing effect going across the wing there which is uh, very subtle and um, again all of the recessed panel lines and then we've got the same for the underside of the wing and a few small parts there a little bit of flash here and there but again nothing out of the um, ordinary when it comes to azure or special hobby looking at some of the clear parts we've got vac form canopies which is uh, mainly just a windshield for this i think oh no sorry no it is it's the whole section so it's that that's the profile of it so it's one half of this, so you get two. Um, might be for two versions, but generally you get two sets of that form in case you mess one up. And then we've got the side windows there as well. And then having a look in the bag of resin. Always be careful when you're dealing with resin. Any bits that come out of the bag, you know, you might be they might have broken off, so you can always um, glue them back on if you still keep them. And then looking in here, this is mainly... Um, they've chosen to reform quite a lot of the plastic parts that are included in the kit into resin, presumably to add more detail. I haven't looked at the two differences. I would imagine it's more detailed in the resin, but I have seen online that um, a few people say that the sword kit compared to this is almost the same. Uh, in, you know, you get it in resin, but it doesn't actually add too much detail, too much more detail. Uh, but looking at that, I mean, if we just take this part, for example. So we've got the kit part there and the resin part there for the instrument panel. And yes, to be fair, I mean, there is more detail on the resin part. It is a lot more detailed, but there's not a lot in it. So again, I expect the sword kit is a lot cheaper than this one so it might be worth looking out for that if you're interested um, the fact that there's two versions of the kit means that um, for an out of production as your kit there's actually quite a lot more availability because you've got it in the sword brand as well um, so looking across the resin uh, no problems there I haven't actually got any parts broken off which is nice all of the um, armrests there on the chairs are all complete so that's good uh, one slight one bent there uh, which can just be moved back and glued. Um, then we've got an engine there, which is just an insert. And that's uh, that's quite nicely detailed. Again, 
putting it up against the kit part. Not a massive amount in it. Slight more refinement on the resin part. So it's, it's only very slight. So uh, if you're ever looking at this kit, possibly weigh out the two versions and um, make a decision on that. Then if we have a quick flick through the instructions and look at the decals. We've got the usual sort of breakdown of um, assembly here with the Azure kits, uh, where you're building up the internal parts here of the cockpit and the uh, passenger section. And then we've got a few small bits as well that go together to be part of the interior. And then we bring the two fuselage halves together. We've got butt joins. I think there's slight uh, pins there for the horizontal stabilizers. Then we've got the engine nacelle here as well, which is going in with two halves for the engine and then the wing goes together here so you've got the three parts making up the underside of it not quite sure why they've chosen to do that uh, that might become clear when you start to build the kit but a bit of a strange way to do that to breaking up this bottom part of the wing so it might just be a place to uh, sort of keep an eye on then we've got the engine going on to the top here which is mounted on as as you can see here and then the windscreen goes on and a few final parts then I imagine we've just got undercarriage and the underside of the wing and it's showing you here how the undercarriage works so it goes back on up to, into the wing. Then we've got some of the marking options. So this is an RAF one at uh, Heliopolis in Egypt, 1942. And then this might make more sense for everyone who's concerned on my channel. We have a Spanish nationalist version from the Spanish Civil War, April 1939. And that's an overall aluminium. That's a natural metal finish with um, anti-glare panels on the front of the cockpit and some decorative um, color here, which is, I believe, is red on the engine nacelle here as well with um, a black waterline. So some very nice options there. And then finally, if we just look at the decals, as with um, Azure, it's printed by Abbey Print. Well, I say that, and it's not. This is early Azure, so this is actually printed by Cartograph. So there shouldn't be many problems with these decals. And you've got the two versions. Here's This section here is for the RAF one, and then all of this here is for the Spanish Civil War one. And again, everything's in perfect register. It's extremely nice decals. The carrier film is very, very minimal. So that is the Azure Fairchild 91 in 170 second scale. A very unusual kit. If you see one around, pick it up. Um, they are quite expensive these days uh, because of their scarcity. The sword kits are a little bit easier to get hold of, but you are looking around the sort of £20 mark. So um, if you see it for anything cheaper than that, snap it up because it's a bargain.